when you look out there today, you will see a lot of information about what people need to do in order to build wealth, right? Uh, a lot of different sources, a lot of good information, but the thing that I see consistently left out of the conversation is the thing that I think is the most important. And the most important thing is you shouldn't be trying to do it as an individual. There's a lot of focus on personal finance, what an individual should do, but the thing that I found is that in order to build wealth uh, in, in any substantial uh, sense, then what you need to do is organize a team, organize a group. And the best team you can organize is your family. But you know, whether it's your family, friends, whatever, whoever it may be, uh, the best thing that poor people, or not just poor people, but middle class people can do to begin to build uh, significant wealth is to organize. And I'm going to show you in a practical sense how to do that now. Now, let's begin by looking at the individual budget uh, for one individual, right? Uh, you know, so let's just look at a typical salary, you know, the average uh, individual in America makes about $36,000 a year. So we'll say that's $3,000 per month. Now I know usually when they get that money, uh, taxes and insurance is taken out. So they usually don't take home three grand, but, uh, for simplicity, let's assume that this person does take home three grand. Okay. Now that we have the income of three grand, Let's consider the expenses that this person uh, may have, hypothetically, right? I'm just taking these numbers off the top of my head, but I will, you know, be reasonable with the numbers that I'm choosing. So a person making about $3,000 per month, it's not unreasonable to think that this person could be paying $1,000 in rent, right? Say $250 on utilities, that's gas, uh, water, lights, cable, a cell phone, $100 per month, groceries, let's say $250 car payment, let's say another 250 gas for that car each month, let's say $200, car insurance, let's go 150 student loans, let's say this individual pays about $300 in student loans, credit cards, let's say that person is paying about, uh, let's say you got a credit card and you're paying about $200 per month, personal care, I'm going to wrap that up in miscellaneous down here, entertainment, I put all of that personal care, entertainment, and miscellaneous, I put it in one one uh, line item. But first, let's take care of gym. Let's say that they're paying about $30 a month in the gym. And let's say this person for personal care, entertainment, you know, going out to eat, uh, watching a movie, whatever, you know, buying a, a nice shirt, pair of shoes, or whatever. Let's say this person gives themselves uh, $250 per month. Okay. As you can see, uh, this person who's making $3,000 per month and they're spending, uh, spending uh, these amounts on all of their bills, which total up to almost that 3,000, that 3,000 total uh, of uh, $2,980. This person doesn't have very much money left over. As an individual, having your own, you know, having your own place, paying a thousand dollars a month in rent, having all of these other bills, it may seem that it's hard to have money left over at the end of the month uh, that would allow you to save, that would allow you to invest. But uh, part of the problem is, well, first of all, an individual you know, as an individual should find ways to cut their bills. Maybe you don't have to have a thousand dollar mortgage. I mean, rent for a mortgage. Maybe you don't have a car payment. Maybe you buy a used car out cash. Uh, you know, however, uh, you have options with that. But the, the main point, regardless, uh, even if, if regardless of whether or not you cut your expenses as an individual, uh, the way that I'm going to show uh, family consolidation uh, will help. Now let's take a look at a family, how, fam how consolidating the family and pooling resources can help uh, individuals save up, uh, not, not an individual person, but an individual family begin to save up the type of money that allows them to invest uh, into other things. Okay, so I'm going to go to this tab that I've labeled family. Okay, and as you can see, I just took the same uh, categories. Uh, I got the income here and the same expense categories uh, that I had on the individual tab, right? I just moved it to the family tab. Okay. And basically I created this, uh, template, uh, using the example of a family of 10. Uh, most people, some people have a family of 10. Some people have a family of a hundred. So, you know, you can just extend this example out. Once I show you uh, the power of consolidating a family of 10 members, what that looks like, then you can just extend the, the example out and see how much more powerful 20 people would be. 30 people would be, so on and so forth. So just explaining this a little bit further. Uh, from one family of 10, but I'm breaking the families down into two five-member household. Household number one has uh, five members. Household number two also has five members, okay? So let's consider, for simplicity, let's say all of these people still make $3,000 each, right? And I'm just using this as a nice average number. If you had a family of 10 people, uh, some people may make $1,000 a month. Some people may make $5,000 a month. 
uh, you can play with the actual numbers, the specific numbers when you got specific family members. But just for simplicity, I'm just using this $3,000 across the board as the average amount of money that the typical American makes, right? Okay. Uh, let's say now, now the first thing we'll start with is uh, the rent or mortgage, right? Now we saw on this individual page that this person would be paying a thousand dollars a month. Each person paying a thousand dollars a month for rent. Well, clearly that's a that's one of the first benefits you can see by consolidating the family. If all of these people just decided to buy a house or even buy big enough uh, rent a big enough apartment uh, that their rent uh, or mortgage payment was not a thousand dollars a month for each person. But instead of a thousand dollars a month for each person, let's say for instance they were able to get a place for twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, twenty five hundred dollars rent mortgage, three, four, five bedroom house that five people are sharing. That's reasonable, I think. Utilities in this house. What we, what did we see for the individual? The utility for the individual will be two fifty. Well, I think it would be unreasonable to think that you have to multiply this by five just because five people are in the house. I think a nice reasonable reasonable number for a household of five people may be $600 a month. Cell phone, okay? The cell phone for each individual on that individual sheet was $100 per month, right? Well, you know, like I know, uh, once you get a family plan of five people on it or so, each one of those uh, phone bills could typically be, typically, typically be about $50 per month. You multiply that by five, and now you've got the family is only paying... Uh, $250 per month for a phone. Groceries, uh, on the individual list, we say our individual ate about $250 worth of groceries. I think once we consolidate, we don't have to spend $250, $250 each. Now we can buy, you know, we can go to BJ's, we can go to uh, Costco and get stuff in bulk, and we won't be spending over $1,000 in uh, food for food. Maybe we'll be spending about uh, another, let's say, $700 for food, okay, between those five people. Car payment. That's another thing once you begin to consolidate. There's no need for you to have a household with five cars parked out in front. You know, a household with five people don't, doesn't need five cars. Maybe we need one big van and then we need an additional and we need an additional smaller car for flexibility. So instead of five car payments of two hundred dollars each, we only have two car payments of two hundred dollars each for a total of four hundred dollars. Right. Then the fuel, instead of $200, uh, $200 for each for five cars, we got $200 a month for two cars, which equals another $400. But let's say we have to do a little bit more ripping and running because now we have to take uh, five people where they need to go. So let's just say $600, okay? $600, okay? Next, we have car insurance. Well, we only have two cars. The car insurance for one car was $150, and for two cars, there'll only be $300. Three hundred dollars, right? Credit cards. Let's say everybody did still had credit cards, and let's say uh, worst case scenario, each individual in the house still had to pay their two hundred dollars per month for a credit card. Okay, then that means five people times two hundred. That's a thousand dollars coming out of the family's money each month for credit card. Personal care. Like I said, uh, I'm gonna lump all of that down in the miscellaneous. Miscellaneous for one individual was uh, two fifty. So you multiply that by five, and then we got twelve fifty, right? Twelve fifty. Okay. It's negative. Should be negative. Negative twelve fifty. Uh, let's say all of them still had gym membership. So that's thirty dollars times five. It's negative fifty. And there we go. Okay. Like I said, so this is the income and expenses. This income here, all of these three thousand times five uh, is the income for this household. Uh, this household segment of the family. Uh, and then the, here are all of the expenses. I just lumped them all in one one line. Now, if this is just one family household, then one one of the households that makes up the family of ten. Then I'm just going to copy, copy, and paste this same thing here to represent the second household, right? So here are all of the here's all of the income for the first household. Here are all of the bills. Here's all of the income for the second household. Here are all the bills. Now, you begin to notice how consolidating allows a family to actually begin to have savings and have money that they can now invest in stocks and bonds and real estate, maybe even build to start a family business, right? Uh, look at this. So once you take this, so basically let's take a look at this, uh, these columns over here to kind of get the summary of what's just happened. Uh, so basically all I did was add up all of these, uh, the income 
of all of the family members. This is 3,000 times 10 family members, every, which, which means every month this family has $30,000 a month coming into that family, right? Okay, uh, that's already a great thing to recognize. Uh, here for the rent, for the rent or mortgage, uh, 2,500 from this household, 2,500 from this household, and now you got $5,000 a month for the total family. Uh, just in the, these yearly extensions are just uh, the monthly income times 12. I mean, every year this family has $360,000 coming into it, right? Uh, this These monthly expenses uh, follow the same convention. I just multiply each one of these line items by 12. If they're paying $5,000 a month in mortgages, you multiply that by 12. That means $60,000 a year is going toward mortgages, uh, utilities, so on and so forth. Uh, you calculate the same way cell phone 500 a year so on and so forth I mean 500 per month multiply that by 12 and this is what they're paying per year but what you begin to see is how a family how a family by working together can begin to build capital that they can use to invest okay every month this family is making thirty thousand dollars the expenses here are coming out to be about uh, fifteen thousand five hundred dollars but when you uh, but when you subtract that from the, the total family income, then the family has $14,500 $14, left over every month. Now, you multiply that by 12, and this family has $174,000 every year that they can begin to invest with. Now let's talk about a few caveats to put this 174 into perspective, right? Uh, one thing we have to recognize is that this number is only, only possible if you have a group of people who are operating like a unit. Uh, and to make that point clear, if we go back to this individual uh, tab and we see that this individual who makes the same amount of money as the individuals listed on this family tab, if this individual uh, operates as an individual and doesn't uh, work within the context of the family, then you see that this person as an individual doesn't have very much money left over every month. I mean, all of their money is eaten up, eaten up by their monthly expenses, right? So, uh, so just to drive that point home, this 174 only makes sense within the context of a family or a organized group of people working together. That's where the savings can uh, potentially kick in, and that's where the family can begin to save substantial amounts of money by working together as a group. Because this 174 is not even possible unless you work together as a group, right? Uh, one thing we can see is until you start thinking within the context of a group then numbers like this thirty thousand dollars a month or this three hundred and sixty thousand dollars per year the numbers aren't even something that you can even comprehend really i mean they don't even make sense uh like i say going back to this individual twenty dollars a month even if you had ten individuals saving twenty dollars a month then that's two hundred dollars a month that's not really much money nothing is really going to get accomplished uh, with that uh, with that arrangement but it's when you start to consolidate expenses consolidate income that numbers like this 174 become possible I mean the concept of consolidation is so powerful that you don't even have to have people who make three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars a month let's play with this yeah let's play with the numbers and even see what what this uh, spreadsheet would look like if the family members only made two thousand dollars each right two thousand dollars each and you see that this family still has money left over the family as a whole still makes twenty thousand dollars a month at the end of the month after paying all of their expenses they still have forty five hundred dollars left over you multiply that forty five hundred by twelve and you get fifty four thousand dollars it's not shabby at all or you can look at it from the perspective of a few individuals making only a thousand dollars right you have one family member who's making three thousand, uh, and then a family member making five thousand, not fifty, but five thousand, so on and so forth. But you begin to see, even if you have a mix of family members, and everybody, the, the powerful thing about this is, this is not a lot of money that for most people. A thousand dollars a month here, two thousand here. Uh, this one big, you have one family member who you know might have went to uh, college got a nursing degree, got a lawyer degree, and they make it $5,000 a month. But the rest of these uh, incomes are very uh, are, are, are very obtainable uh, for a lot of people. So what I'm saying is the power comes from organizing the family to so that you can be able to recognize and realize the potential uh, for hitting these numbers when it comes to having investment capital. 
So now that you've seen how it's possible to save capital, uh, in the next video, I'll show you the process by which you make it grow. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and share this video with somebody because I know you know somebody who needs to see it. All right.